So this is a about 80 reporters here ready to pepper you with questions. And we were testing them a little earlier. They all they all have some really good questions. All right, we got about six to eight samples. They have done their homework. They know what to ask. So you feel free to point, go in any direction you want, and off you go. Yeah, I'll start the front. Hey, yo, what up? Wait. Oh. <laughs> Number one, uh, like, I kind of deal with, like, you know, weight, self-consciousness, like, and, like, you know, you being a lineman, like, you kind of have to be, like, a really big heavyweight. Like, do you, like, do you ever, like, deal with, like, self-consciousness with your weight as well? Um, that's a good question. I like that a lot. Um, I think as athletes, and, you know, being in the position I play, most everybody weighs 300 pounds. Um, you know, I hear talk about guys, you know, I mean, there's a little difference between women's sports and men's sports, you know, this new age of where we're at right now, like mental health, talking about everything. Um, you know, it's, it's really starting to come to light and people talking about, you know, the stuff that they face in the darkness and you know, how they feel when they go home and I got teammates, and, you know, everybody kind of suffers uh, you know, body image and all that kind of unrealistic expectations about how things are supposed to look like, but I don't really think any of that stuff should matter. Um, you know, if you are who you are, you're happy, you do what you love. I do, I love what I do and I enjoy it. And, uh, you know, right now, weighing 300 pounds, I don't think anybody wants to weigh 300 pounds. It kind of hurts walking around, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm doing this right now, it's what I have to do for my job. Um, I think everybody does, Everybody in my office, the line room, you know, we talk about that. You know, there's some guys that are just naturally uh, built perfectly. So, I mean, everybody's different, but um, I think something that I think I struggled with maybe in high school, I and mean, I wanted to play wide receiver, tight end, and, uh, and then putting on trying to gain weight as much as I can, putting on like 30 pounds every year in high school. Um, you know, you kind of get it in different places. You might not like uh, like where it's at, but. Um, looking back on that, like that's gotten me to the point I'm at right now in my career, and I know that this is something that I have to do for my job, and you know I enjoy it, I embrace it, and I really don't listen to or care what other people have to say about how I look or how I feel, as long as I know that me myself, I'm happy and I'm doing what I like, and that stuff doesn't make any mission I do this. Keep that narrow focus, look straight ahead and don't block the block out of Good for you. You look great for three and a half, by the way. Kieran <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Gokani, we play about good camps. Like the mustache, by the way. Uh, um, but obviously, there's been a lot of turnover in the wide receivers group or uh, the Packers. And I mean, you look, Devontae Adams is gone, Marquez Valdez, Scantling is gone. Um, you got it in Christian Watson, second round pick, and Robio Dallas, a fourth round pick. Um, how do you think that affects the offense? And how do you think that affects Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely difficult. He's in uh, probably the best wide receiver in the league. Uh, he's one of the fastest wide receivers in the league as well with Mark Wes. Um, but I think uh, Aaron is so talented. And you just look at his like track record, all the receivers and uh, you know his, his weapons and his targets that he's had, they, they've never really been top draft picks. And uh, now we got the second rounder from North Dakota State. We got Dobbs, who I think he's looking pretty good. And uh, he just needs people that are able to catch a ball. And Aaron's going to throw them open. It doesn't really matter um, how that goes. And Aaron's always doing his thing. You know, he's going to be ready, uh, catching these rookies up to speed. And I think as a rookie, um, just uh, understanding the playbook and just being in the right place at the right time is Aaron would make him look really good. I mean, one of the, probably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time is uh, it's kind of crazy. Every, time, every now and then I gotta take a step back and you know, just appreciate what I'm doing and have gratitude for where I'm at. And, uh, I'm really excited for those rookies. Um, I think our offense across the board is gonna be really good and we stacked up on defense, two first round picks. Uh, one of them come from the Devontae trade, so the new special teams coordinator, so it'll be everything meshes this year. Oh, this is tough. <laughs> 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 and Norm with Clever Sports with a departure of Devontae Adams. Do you think that will cause the Tigers to commit to the run board? Um, 
I think we've always tried to be in a pretty balanced offense. Uh, we got guys back here like Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. It's kind of thunder and lightning with uh, Aaron Jones' explosiveness and AJ Dillon being able to run down Dillon and pick up eight, nine yards at the contact. Um, I think for offense, in my perspective, you want to be a run dominant team. Uh, when you run dominant team, it kind of opens up stuff down the field, play action. I feel like that's where Aaron's his best. He's got an unbelievable deep ball. Uh, he's got a nice back shoulder ball. So having that run game, it just I think it's just vital to any offensive success. It's tough going back there and having to throw you know, 50 plays a game. I know, I know some teams are out of the NFL. And it's tough to win games like that. So you, you've always tried to commit to the run. And uh, once you commit to the run, you're doing good at it. You get defense over playing, and that's going to take a shot. Um, I'd like to say no, <laughs> but um, this is what I've always imagined for myself uh, growing up since I was little. I always, growing up, done my father's games uh, every week. I knew I always wanted to play football. I think there, there came a point in my college career. I was a, I was a junior, and I saw this stuff. I was in my third year. I was a junior. I saw my starting game. I didn't even start my first game to our bowl game in my junior year. So I was like, heck, in my senior. And then I was able to play my senior in my fifth year. And I got lucky enough to you know, get an opportunity to um, play in the NFL. And this is what I want to do my whole life. So I knew when I had that, I was going to let it go. And uh, here at this point now, and it's been a really awesome journey. Thank you. It's on the back. Yeah, playing at Lambeau is awesome. Uh, I know a lot of guys around the league, uh, they tell how cool the atmosphere is at Lambeau. I think we got about five or six prime time games this year. So, you know, uh, TV, the eyes are always on always on us. And if we're not playing a prime time game, we're playing that 4.30 slot. We don't really have any games to do because that's when all the other teams are playing. And, you know, you get, you get those teams that put like drafted first, second, and third, we're playing those many games. And, you don't really do that, so you, you get the eyes on you all the time. Um, that's just something, it's exciting that my family is able to watch it uh, across the country, but that's something I try not to focus on, because that, become, that can become pretty overwhelming uh, to think about how many millions of people are watching. But, um, you know, it, it's awesome being there and uh, playing for the Packers, such a great historical organization, and uh, try not to think about it. Like that. Uh, it's a, it's a good question. I think the easy, safe answer would be Aaron Donald uh, against uh, uh, the Rams. Uh, but uh, we, we had a good game plan in for him. I think we kind of neutralized him. But I think one guy that is on Aaron Donald's level or just below that really nobody talks about is Jonathan Allen. He's a uh, defensive tackle for the Washington Commanders. I think he's, I don't want to say he's just as good. I think he's up there with how good Aaron Donald is. Um, people don't talk around him. He doesn't get the recognition for it. Uh, he's got some unbelievable moves. Um, we played him again this year. Uh, he got, he, he, I gave him two sacks last year. He was one of them. So I'm looking forward to uh, not letting him get me. Uh, hi, Jacob Schulman here with uh, SB, uh, SBC. Um, I have one question because you've also been in those playoff environments, and I know that I play football as well, and that every loss stings. But it, does a playoff loss hurt more than like a loss in college and in a rivalry game like Ohio State, or does in every level you go up, does the loss hurt more, or do you get more used to it? I, th I think every loss hurts, even if it's uh, the regular season. I Obviously, it hurts more in the playoffs. Um, anytime, you know, in most sports, um, 
if you end the season with the win, that means you're you're probably the champion uh, in you know whatever league or conference you're playing in. And ending the season with the win is tough, but uh, you know only one team gets to do it every year, um, and then go home to the Super Bowl. And while I'm in college. Uh, I didn't end too many seasons with the win, and I've been close. My rookie year, we made it to the NFC Championship, and this year we lost in the divisional round. And those are both tough because you know you have you have the hopes and the aspirations of making it, making it to the Super Bowl and winning that, and you know when that, when that doesn't happen and you know reality starts to hit you that you're not going to go, it, it kind of hurts. And, you know it's tough. And we put all this work in from July to see it all end late January. And it's tough that you don't get to see it through. So definitely all all losses hurt. Brown from uh, Sports Illustrated, and I wanted to ask you, uh, you, your sister plays basketball here in Villanova, and your dad was a long-time NFL player. How does your athletic family impact your journey as the NFL? Yeah, uh, growing up, my dad, like, like I said earlier, he was always, I was always going to his games. Uh, he was taking me out throughout the facility when I was a little kid, and, you know, being around that and being in the locker room. Looking at guys like Don McNabb, Terrell Owens, Brian Westbrook, and you know, being able to see them in the locker room and then, you know, going over their houses in the free time with my dad and just seeing that, like I knew that was something that I wanted to do when I was older. And uh, both my sisters were pretty athletic, so we had a pretty intense, you know, competitive environment at home. We were always in the backyard playing basketball. Uh, I like to say that that made my sisters kind of basketball players and you know, they are today. I was, you know, I did beat them up a little bit, but I think it's for their, their own good. And uh, they're pretty strong, nice to uh, players. And I like watching it and uh, I take credit in some of that. So it's a really exciting to watch. Oh. Hi, Jeff. Um, I'm Felix Robinson from Play by Play Sports. As someone who uh, blocks for Aaron Rodgers on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm sure you know, you've know met him a lot, you've spent a lot of time with him, you're very close with him. How many more years do he has of being prime Aaron Rodgers in the NFL? Uh, so I think Aaron's about 38 years old right now. Uh, I think Tom Brady is what, 43, 44? <laughs> Aaron's won about two MVPs in a row, been really close to the Super Bowl since he won it in about 2010, 2011. Uh, you know, I, think, I think Aaron's still, uh, he's still peaking. I think he's still got more left in him. I can see him playing for another, and honestly, I can see him playing for one more year, two more years if he wants. He can probably play for another team. So, uh, who knows? It's really up to him. I don't think his talent ever fall off. I don't think he's a guy that, you know, wants to have one of those victory parades the whole entire year and, you know, just riding off in the distance. I think he wants to go out on his own terms when he feels the time to ride at the top of his game. Uh, top of his game. So, you know, I think whatever that is for him, you know, he'll be ready. He'll be happy for that. So, uh, hi, Roman Bostic with Next Generation Sports Talk. Uh, playing on an offensive line with some absolute legends like David Bakhtiari and blocking for one of the best quarterbacks of all time in Aaron Rodgers, how does it feel to be side by side with these Hall of Famers and legends? Uh, it's, uh, it's awesome. I think it really helps my game a lot, uh, especially playing with David. He's always in my ear, just like trying to focus on little minor details that can help improve my game. And Playing with them makes me play better, but it also makes me look better. You know, Aaron, Aaron's not one to hold the ball back there. He's going to get the ball out of his hands. So, you know, it's easier when you have a quarterback that's getting the ball out uh, in three seconds and not holding on to it back there. And having David next to me and uh, having all those guys up front, uh, it's been really nice, really helpful. And I appreciate them. And I, I think they've had a really integral part in making me the player in today.